Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and the big, huge, mega story right now, and everybody's all freaked out because the SEC is going to sue Ripple over XRP. And the first important thing, well, I'm going to give you what the real story is, but the first important thing to get out of this thing is that there's no, the price... <laughs> So, for those of you that don't know, last night, yesterday evening, all of a sudden, Ripple announces, and this is the story too, Ripple announces that the SEC is going to sue them. We did not have an article that the SEC is announcing that it is suing Ripple. And that that is a red flag for me because that tells me that this is a political play on the part of Ripple in anticipation of something which which makes me believe this whole thing is a political thing. And look, when we say political, it all comes back to the money. And I'll go over that too and what I really think this is about. But you know what the real story out of all this is? The real, the real, real story is this. That with the announcement of the SEC in the United States suing Ripple, supposedly suing Ripple, the price did not take that big of a hit. Not like what you would think. You would have thought that the price would have taken a 20 cent hit just like that in seconds. It did not do that. It took a two to four cent hit and now it's coming back up. And do you know what that means? That means that the big boys know something that you and I don't know. Otherwise, it would have been a mega, mega dump. And it wasn't. That's the first thing to pay attention to. All right, so here's the Brad Garlinghouse tweet that set all this off. Actually, before I saw this, I saw Michael Arrington say, it was tweet out something, and he said, Jay Clayton's an asshole, or something like that. That was the first thing I saw, and then I saw the news. But Brad Garlinghouse says, Today the SEC voted to attack crypto. Chairman Jay Clayton, in his final act, is picking winners and trying to limit U.S. innovation in the crypto industry to Bitcoin and Ethereum. By the way, they're both proof of work and proof of work does not work. That's a quote from Ryan Zagone. Then he says, we, we know crypto and blockchain technologies aren't going anywhere. Ripple has and will continue to use XRP because it is the best digital asset for payments. Speed, cost, scalability, and energy efficiency. It's traded in 200 plus exchanges globally and will continue to thrive. The SEC, and I want to make sure you all, any of you that are out there that are that got freaked out about this, this is something that's very important for you to understand. Two things. A, Ripple is a global company. doesn't matter. Ripple, they, they can tell Ripple, do whatever they want, and then Ripple can go and, and change their headquarters. They can be in Dubai. They can be in London. They, Ripple's a global company. They already have branches in all these places, okay? The second thing is, there's nothing you can do to put the XRP ledger genie back in the bottle. This thing is a thing and it's going to be a thing. It's, it's an open source thing and it's, and you're not, no matter what anybody does, they're not going to change that. You can shut it all down in the United States and someone can be operating this thing globally everywhere else and they will be. The, the SEC knows this. Okay. So you need to understand that. Let's finish the last part of this thing. The SEC, out of step with other G20 countries and the rest of the U.S. government, should not be able to cherry pick what innovation looks like, especially when their decision directly benefits China. Make no mistake, we are ready to fight and win this battle. This battle is just beginning. And here's the, this is the Fortune article, but he, he summed it all up, so I don't need to show you the, the actual, um, go down into the actual article, but here's the headline. Ripple says it will be, come on. Ripple says it will be sued by the SEC in what the company calls a parting shot at the crypto industry. Okay, I'm going to give you in this video, I'm going to show you some things you may not have known about this whole um, drama that we've seen for the last two or three years. And I'm going to show, but I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think it's really all about. 
Um, okay. Brad Garlinghouse again. He said, Jay Clayton is taking notes from the Grinch this holiday season, leaving the actual legal work to the next administration. He's retweeting a Stuart Alderati. And those of you that don't know, Stuart Alderati is the general counsel for Ripple. He's their in-house attorney. In 2015, the U.S. government concluded XRP was a virtual currency. Last I checked, the SEC is still part of the U.S. government. Here's the plus side. The industry will finally get the clarity it deserves. Goodbye, Howie test. Hello, Ripple test. I think he said it right here, folks. I think that Ripple wants to spur this on. I think they want the SEC. I almost believe that Ripple is intentionally forcing, trying to force the SEC's hand and get them to make a decision. And Because... I think Ripple knows. I think Ripple knows that they have to make the decision in the favor. They have no choice because the XRP ledger is out and Ripple is out. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be a fine involved. I believe there will be. I've always believed that the, the XRP escrow would never be allowed to be all Ripples, that it would have to be distributed in some kind of way. This may be where this is going. You know, you hear people paying fines. I think this is about Ripple paying escrow. And I think it's about Ripple paying escrow to the right people in order to, and yeah, that's a fine. Paying some of the XRP escrow, handing it over to whoever, SEC, Fellers, or who, whoever. I believe that's what this is really about. I believe it had to happen. I don't believe there's ever going to be a choice between that happening and not happening. All right, moving along. Um, Michael Arrington says, those of you gloating over the U.S. government's attack on XRP should take a step back and think about where this all ends up. There's no coherence or logic behind these moves. It's spite and fear. All right. And then we've got this. Michael at VAL 5 Link sent me this. And this is what I want to show some of you who haven't been around. Now, this person says in 2013, it was actually in 2015, the Department of Treasury and the Financial Crimes Network FinCEN fined Ripple for not registering as a money services business for selling the virtual currency XRP and forced them to register. Now, this is at the actual FinCEN website, May 5th, 2015. FinCEN fines Ripple Labs in the first civil enforcement action against a virtual currency exchanger. Um, and it says Ripple Labs. I'm not going to go through all of it, but I wanted to just kind of give you the gist of it. Under federal law, each money services business is a business doing one of the following currency dealer or exchanger. Under federal law, each, mo each money services business is also considered financial institution right here. And by the way, this, for any of you who have been wondering, the reason that Ripple has been able to conduct business all these years, this is the reason. Once they paid this fine, they were legit. They paid this fine and they had an actual uh, judgment, or I don't know if you call it a judgment, it says next, a filing on the same violation from the Department of Justice specifically identifies XRP as a virtual currency. So the Department of Justice was involved, FinCEN was involved, they had the paperwork in their hand, and it was signed off by by attorneys, as I recall. Let me, there was U.S. attorneys that signed off on this. I've seen this before, and I've actually shown it to you. Um, if you go down, I think it's on the bottom here. Yeah. That is Norman Reed that signed off of it. And there's also, as I recall, there was a U.S. attorney or two that had signed off on this thing. Here we go. Yeah. Assistant U U.S. attorney, Catherine Hahn, assistant United States attorney. And by the way, I've shown in a video before that she is now on Coinbase's board. Okay. I think I'm almost positive it's her. Norman Reed just so happens to be, let me see, I'm not sure where Norman Reed is. I think he's, he might be with Global ID. I don't even remember. Okay. So back to this. All right. So they had a, they had a, an agreement more or less with the Department of Justice, which is obviously the reason that they've been able to, to go forward the way they have. Um, so, so, so now we know that under, under order of the federal government, Ripple Labs is a financial institution that facilitates the exchange of virtual currency. Um, da, da, da. So anyway, the bo bottom line is that that if you want to call it a get out of jail free card, that's what that was. And everybody knows it. And, and the SEC knows it. See, this is the, this is why you got to look. 
political. This I'm, I believe that we're watching uh, all the world's a stage, folks. I believe we're watching the stage right now. Okay, moving along. And also, also, there's another element of this, and that is that is the markets. Now, look what's been happening in the markets the last the last uh, few months. We saw XRP begin to uh, eclipse Bitcoin and Ethereum, and and we were seeing the XRP prices trending, and in some of these metrics began to go over the top of the Bitcoin and all that. Well, as we know from 2017, anytime that begins to happen, the FUD begins. So we start to see articles and all kinds of things to try to scare you away from XRP. It happens every time. Back in 2017, coin market cap actually removed the South Korean exchanges overnight from coin market caps because the prices over there were, were so much higher for, for purchases of XRP that they decided just without telling anybody they were going to change it. And it ended up tanking the market because people woke up the next morning and what they saw was whatever, a $3.50 XRP was then a $3.20. Nothing had changed except they just took out the prices, the price reflection from South Korea without telling anybody. Okay, so games are played. Then all of a sudden, and make sure you take note, because anytime, any, anytime that times are rough, you get to find out who your real enemies are. Here's two of them. One, Vitalik Buterin looks like Ripple XRP team is sinking to new lows of strangeness. They're claiming that their shitcoin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ethereum are Chinese controlled, which they are. So anyway, now we know Bit now we know that Vitalik Buterin is not one of the good guys. Here's who else we know is not one of the good guys. We already kind of knew it. Bitcoin Maxi, Anthony Pompliano. He says, good morning to everyone except the people who thought they could sell unregistered securities and get away with it. So he's basically accusing Brad Garlinghouse and friends of doing something criminal. And I said, why does Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse give this guy the time of day? I've said it a lot of times. I don't understand why they keep going unless all the world's a stage and this guy is just a player in the game. And this is, we're all watching a play unfold, which is very possible here. So, but then, um, this was sent to me. I forgot to, uh, it was sent to me by Halo Seiko Carmona. This little thread right here, Pompliano actually doubles down, decides he wants to be a jerk. <laughs> and he goes, um, I listen to everyone's, let's see. I listened to everyone's opinion, but they lost me when they openly became enemies of Bitcoin and the decentralization movement. Brad Garlinghouse comes in and says, I'm not an enemy of Bitcoin, never have been. I told Bitcoin and am bullish. As I said in your podcast, oh, and good morning to you also. And and then Pompliano doubles down again and says, how much Bitcoin do you hold compared to XRP? And will you commit to stop dumping XRP on retail investors? I mean, this guy, I, look, I always thought that, that Anthony Pompliano was a reasonably intelligent guy, but he is really outing himself as not as smart as I thought he was. This right here is just, is not even smart to even begin to get into this dialogue. You know what he's really mad about? What he, what Anthony Pompliano is really mad about, let's call a spade a spade here. What he's really mad about is that he was, and it wasn't Brad Garlinghouse's doing. Anthony Pompliano made himself look like a fool in that last interview when Brad Garlinghouse said, are you telling me that China can't control the, the miners uh, in, that are in China? And Anthony Pompliano specifically said, well, yeah, they could shut, they, they could shut them down, but they can't control them. And it was laughable. And Brad Garlinghouse made that funny face. That's what Anthony Pompliano is still, he's still upset about that one because, but it wasn't Brad Garlinghouse. Brad Garlinghouse was like, really? You really believe that? Which is common sense. Anthony Pompliano is the one that backed himself into a stupid corner. That's his fault. Okay. Um, and then now, now we're, now we're hitting on it right here. JC Collins, who, um, by the way, he has a website that's really cool. He, he covers like geopolitics and stuff. Also has some specific XRP articles. His website's called thephilosophyofmetrics.com. Go check it out. The guy's a really smart guy. He says, power is never relinquished willingly. The exorbitant privilege of the USD since 1944 has ran its course. The USD establishment knows this and also understands XRP genie can't be put back in the lamp. 
The SEC potential suit is all about controlling the escrow. That's how I see it. That's how I see it, too. I believe this is all about the escrow. Look, even at the local level, when my father was a home builder or when we were developing subdivisions, there's always somebody that's sticking their hand out. Somebody's getting paid. One of my favorite TV, my favorite TV show of all time, Dallas, J.R. Ewing. He was always having to pay off somebody in government or pay off some politician. You're always having to, 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 to butter that bread, as you could call it, because to, to, to take things to the next level. So imagine what you got to do if you're trying to become a world reserve digital currency. That's what this is really about. It's not, but it's not about making a payment. It's about making an escrow payment. It's about handing over some of that es- escrowed XRP to the people that have to get theirs for anything to happen in the United States. That's what this is really about. And I mean, come on. That's how the world works. And I- I'm not even holding it against the SEC. That's how the world works. Everybody's got to get theirs. Okay. Jim Hyatt said this, and this is smart too. There's a few guys from the XRP community that said some things that I really agree with. My take, not surprised as Ripple has been applying pressure to the SEC for months, and this is a parting shot. SEC says, upon inception, XRP was a security. It is no longer a security due to decentralization. Pay a fine and go on with your day. Throwback courtesy of, um, and this is um, Bank XRP had tweeted this out a while back. This is Heath Tarbert from the, uh, he's from the CFTC, I think, yeah, CFTC chairman. Listen to what he said back, when was this? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it, I think it was a while, a while back. Is it a security, first and foremost? And if it's not a security, it is most likely a commodity. And so that is the initial sort of test. What I will say is the interesting thing, unlike other kinds of investment contracts, is a digital asset can transform itself throughout time. So you can have a situation where something in an initial coin offering is very much a security, but over time, the system becomes more and more decentralized. Mm. Uh, The enterprise that originally sort of sponsored the currency is no longer in the fore. The thing is sort of running itself. There's an intangible uh, value, you know, that's there. So you can have things that actually switch back and forth. You could also imagine a scenario where something is very much decentralized, but then all of a sudden, you know, there's a pullback, uh, the, the company gets more involved, Involved in it, it starts to look more like a common enterprise where profits are derived from the activity of others, thereby meeting the Howey test. But I think all things being equal, if you if you approach it as is this a security, and if you come to the conclusion it's not with the SEC, uh, it's most likely going to be a commodity. Well, and- all right, okay. So and then moving on, Cryptopolis had a really good uh, idea here too. One scenario, if the SEC determines XRP is security, it may no longer be traded on crypto exchanges. Once Ripple settles, pays the fine, and registers XRP as a security, it trades on the NASDAQ. Either way, a win. Just be aware, crypto exchanges may delist until that happens. Good point made by this guy. This could could be a way Ripple could IPO the first blockchain token. Now, um, two things. The first thing is someone made the point to me that EOS, when they were going through things with the SEC, was not delisted on Coinbase. I believe that was told to me this morning by somebody. Um, also, I swear, I want to say, I should have looked it up. Somebody looked this up for me. I'm pretty sure. Didn't we see Coinbase apply to be a broker that could list securities not too long ago? I am almost I'm going to look it up on my phone right now. Um, let me see. I'm going to, and then I can, I can read it to you while I'm sitting here because I swear, um, that Coinbase, Coinbase broker dealer. I'm pretty sure that they did. Okay. Coinbread. Let's see. Coinbase securities. Let's see why. Okay. Why, this is from Investopedia, Investopedia 2018, why Coinbase bought a broker dealer. So Coinbase apparently brought, bought a broker dealer. Now, I knew that they were somehow trying to get a broker dealer license in one way or another. That might be something worth looking at because then they, all of a sudden it would be fine for them to do that, keep, to have something. But I don't think 
XRP. It just XRP is not a security. Nothing about it looks like a security. I don't think that's the road this goes down. I think this is about the control of the escrow and get letting the feds have theirs. That's what I think this is about. Or letting them have control over a certain amount of it. X-Men XRP, I just wanted to show you CNBC. It is, of course, headlining this. I'm sure that now now that it's bad new, a, a bad article, they will probably put XRP where it belongs in the list. It'll be Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. Normally what they do is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and put all the proof of work coins there. And a lot of times don't even show XRP. But since this is a bad article, I'm sure they'll show it very prominently in the list. And then Yoshitaka Katao reminds everyone, Japan's FSA has already made it clear that XRP is not a security. I'm optimistic that Ripple will prevail on the final ruling in the U.S. SBI Holdings remains a steadfast partner to Ripple and looks forward to expanding together in Asia. Giving the SEC a little nod there from Yoshitaka Katao. Anders L., remember this? Former SEC chair to represent Ripple in a lawsuit. Makes you feel like all the world's a stage, doesn't it? Now, also, there was this. Remember this from Digital Assets Daily? This is Stuart Alderati, Ripple's general counsel. Back, I think, 2000, I think it was 2019 at some point. XRP sits, as I said, on an open permissionless ledger. How do I know that it's open and permissionless? Because the chief technology officer at Ripple tells me it is. He explains it to me. But I also have hard evidence. The SEC announced about a month or two ago that they're going to establish a node on the XRP ledger and other open and permissionless ledgers. The SEC didn't call Ripple to ask permission for to do that. They're just going to do that. XRP sits. All right. So, so the question there is, so why, if you're the SEC, why are you going to run a, an XRP node if you're worried about the, that this is somehow some nefarious deal or whatever? And then we've got this from James Rule XRP. This is an article from back in August 2019. SEC reveals plan to spin up Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP nodes. The SEC is looking to hire contractors to run nodes for some of the leading distributed ledgers, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin, Cash, Stellar, Zcash, EOS, and NEO. The SEC originally issued its request for quotes from contractors in June. Agency now wants to utilize nodes to support its efforts to monitor risk, improve compliance, and inform commission policy with respect to digital assets. And so they're going to do all this. And then out of nowhere, when we happen to be at the place where this market is taking off, and as you, as everybody knows that we're now going into the digital age, and now all of a sudden the SEC has a problem with XRP and with Ripple, not buying it here, no way, no how. This, if this is anything, this is a part of a planned thing, um, but but most likely it's just somebody that wants to get some of that escrow. And, um, and to control the situation going forward, which I always thought that was going to happen anyway. Um, or I thought it had already been planned, which I kind of think it was. Um, remember this seven days ago? This is the other thing that doesn't make any sense. Remember this seven days ago? Sandy O'Connor, who is a 30-plus year J.P. Morgan veteran, she comes on board as a board, board on the board of directors at Ripple seven days ago. You're telling me she didn't know anything about this SE thing seven days ago. I'm not buying it. Here's part of the reason I'm not buying it. I just decided for kicks that I would look up Sandy O'Connor and Jay Clayton, who's the SEC chairman that, that supposedly is doing this. And here's what came up. First, this is her seven days ago. She joins the Ripple board. This is Jay Clayton's public calendar from November 1st of 2017, November 30th, 2017. He was meeting at 10 a.m. with Larry Fink from BlackRock. We know all about BlackRock on this channel and their affiliation with Ripple. And then at 1230, he was meeting with all these people from J.P. Morgan, Sandy O'Connor, Chief Regulatory Affairs Officer at J.P. Morgan. So you're telling me. Somebody wants to sell to me the chief regulatory officer at J.P. Morgan comes to Ripple seven days ago and has no freaking clue about the fact that the SEC is now about to crack down on Ripple and it's all over. You're telling me that's what you want to sell to me? No, 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 no. Not the digital asset investor won't be sold on that. 
All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits, like Jay Clayton is exiting right now, and they have their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. Now, I want to remind you all this uh, we've been, uh, we've seen online about the ledger, the hack of people's names and addresses and all that on the ledger. This is the guy, I think he's the, the CEO of Ledger, and he outlines all of it in this article. You can go to at what Bitcoin did, and he's got a, how the attack happened, what to do if you were affected, the consequences of the breach, the company response, Ledger liability. And, and by the way, if you, um, let me follow them. If you, um, since we are, anytime this market is going crazy and things are happening, you start have the scammers and the hackers are coming out of nowhere. So what I do is I've got a, a VPN that it, it keeps, lets you surf the web um, anonymously and you just download it to your computer. They're running an 88% off sale, Christmas sale on um, pure VPN. It's in the description of this video at the very top. You just click on the link and you can get that. They've got like 88% off for like five years or something. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages, and the digital asset investor is in the play too. Thank you for listening.